Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And of course, if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. All right, let's see who is on the stream today. Taz, hi, thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in, even though we're a little late today. Bloke, Daniel, okay, Fernando, let's go. Sam Paulo is here, along with Australia, all right? Cyprus, okay? I believe LBC is here. Happy Friday, everybody, all right? We'll give people a few minutes to jump in, right? Because we're, uh, we're doing this a little bit freestyle today. Virginia is here. Nigeria, right? Wrong again, wants to know if I overslept. No, not at all. All right. Alabama, roll tide. Chicago, right? The UK is up. We appreciate that. Croatia, hello. Welcome. Welcome to all our friends in the US and abroad. All right. Our friends in Asia, Arizona, Pakistan, South Dakota, Virginia. Okay. Welcome to the show. And of course, of course, Brooklyn in the house. All right. We also have Notorious Love. We have Nano Notorious Love. Yeah, man. That thing is going. All right. We have Austin, Texas, Music City, and Nashville, along with Columbia. All right, people. Let's get to it. Yesterday, we talked weekly charts. We talked about the overall breakout and a trend that we believe is happening in crypto. So let's review how we've approached the market for anybody who's just joining us. Over the last, say, six weeks, we were like, don't sell support and don't buy resistance. Now, we still think that we're just changing up the game. In, in my opinion, the market is moving from a range environment to a trend environment. Yesterday, we looked at weekly charts and established and said, all right, it looks like there's a new trend starting. So we moved yesterday from intraday to weekly. Today, because it seems the trend has started, we're going back to the intraday charts, okay, to give you the dip buying strategy. So rather than trade a range, we're looking for support points to get involved. Now, one of the reasons why we have confidence in the momentum strategy, or as the, the title shows, the dip strategy, okay, is because the token metrics momentum indicators are beeping green more each day. Let's get into it. Rune, okay, what is Rune telling us? Rune is telling you that this market is making, you know, higher lows, dipping less than you thought and mooning, mooning harder than even the bulls could think of. Okay. Like I am ridiculously bullish rune based on charts. And I love the theme of cross chain DeFi, even though this is very risky in terms of their ability to execute the technology, the chart looks better and better over time. One of the things you might see in the top right hand corner is, you know, rune will consolidate around these diagonal lines that I drew, right? And then all of a sudden it just goes, right? In other words, people wait for a dip. The dip is shallower than they expect. And then the market takes off. Let me say that again. People get a dip. The dip is smaller than they expect. And then the rally is bigger than they expect. Keep this in mind. Okay, this is Bitcoin on the weekly chart. I noticed something. All right. Bitcoin 
is about to, if it gets above 45,000 or 44,500, it's about to get back above the 38% retracement of the entire move that started with the COVID puke all the way to the euphoric rally of last year. Now, we don't talk that much about FIB retracements. Normally, when we talk about them, we look for altcoins or airdrops that go up, go down, and hold the 62% retracement, and then resume. Okay, this happened in ApeCoin. ApeCoin actually ran the stops below the 62% and then turned around. Now, the other time to start talking about retracements, right, is when, say, a market starts to either come down and hold on, say, a 38 or a 23% retracement. Or in the case of Bitcoin, it goes way down, it holds, and then it starts coming back up above the key 38% level. Now, why is 38% relevant? Well, because when you look at big trends, right, it's really clean. If you go up and then you come back down 38% and then you continue to move, it's kind of old school, right? So you're like, oh, gee, did I miss Bitcoin? Is, you know, can I do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can do this, right? Notice Bitcoin isn't dipping. It's not moving. It's just sitting there, right? That's a sign that I'm not the only one who can see that Bitcoin is probably about to advance on a trend that could take it as high as 52. So the weekly chart is telling you that we're this close from a big breakout in Bitcoin. Now, Solana, all right? Solana was up big yesterday. We talked about looking at token metrics's uh, low frequency trading indicator, right? Our visual trends indicator, it's, it combines academic finance math and technical analysis. And the objective was to try to find big coins, right? Either right before they go green, bullish, or as they're going bullish. Now, as we said that, Solana turned around and went up 10%. And as we have discussed very, uh, you know, numerous times, a venture capitalist may be done selling Solana. Everybody who was going to sell it has sold it. Now, fresh buyers can come in and potentially drive the market higher, especially since smart money may have been accumulating it aggressively below 100. Now, Solana has gone green, and you're like, well, okay, yeah, we understand that. It was up huge yesterday. But what you didn't know is that Solana has vaulted itself to the number one rated crypto on our rankings page. Normally, you have small coins at the top of that ranking. Now, because Token Metrics is a company, I called them up. I, don't, I called our quant department. I'm like, is Solana at the top of the range because of the way it mooned last time? Like, not the top of the range, the top of the list. Like, how did Solana go from nowhere to the number one ranked crypto? Now, you don't know if it's going to be there tomorrow, but the point is this. We are seeing indications in large cap cryptos. Look at the rest of the list. Solana, right? Elrond, okay? Big coins, okay? GHST is up there. Metaverse, NFTs, etc. This stuff is moving to the top of the ratings. So you got Bitcoin breaking out or about to break out, big coins going up 10% and our momentum indicators beeping off the charts. Okay? Here is GHST, right? The last bearish signal got you out in December. And the bullish signal was yesterday. Okay. Now, here's GHST on the daily chart. Okay. We always talk about, you know, the nine top, right? DeMarc counts a certain set of conditions, like the high is higher than the high two days ago. It's complicated, right? What you want to look for is you want to look for one through nine. That's the start of a trend. Okay. Range trading is different. One through nine is the start of a trend. Then what you look for is the sharp counter trend move, which, oh, look, they're selling it today. Probably because the bond market is just heaving. Interest rates are rising. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Let them kill it for like one or two days. But remember Rune, right? Dips may be shallower than you think because if this DeMarc work follows theory, 
coins like this can dip, right? And if they hold, they're going to turn around and go through what's called the countdown phase, right? Which is another set of conditions that goes from one to 13. In other words, a big up move, right? So if people come in and start buying the next dip, right? If the Russians pull their usual, you know, let's try to scare everybody on Sunday night before equities open, this might give you the opportunity to buy a dip. Now, even if the geopolitical situation doesn't matter, ask yourself this question. Do you think people really want to buy crypto when it's up like this? After nine weeks of being trained to not buy it when it's up? Okay. Bull markets can hurt people just like bear markets, right? Everyone wants a dip now and they may not get one. Or the dip could be a quick Friday dip. And you can walk in on Monday morning and they're off to the races. Okay. Or you get the Sunday night dip and then everybody walks in Monday and goes, oh my God, I'm buying all of this. Right. Particularly if it lurches down like today and there's no follow through selling. How do you know sellers are out of ammo? Well, when you see ugly red candles and then it just stops, it goes all quick, quiet. Okay. That means, you know, okay. Yeah. People took profits and everybody panicked and got out, but the sellers are out of ammo. Now let's talk about nano, man. You want to talk about the sellers are out of ammo, nano Zcash and Bitcoin, right? The future of money, digital cash solutions. We've been talking about nano. We've been talking about Bitcoin. We were talking about Zcash, right? These things gap up. If Nano holds 247, it can keep going. People are going to need cryptocurrency. Okay, previous videos, we have covered this massively, right? The future of money and the future of technology, which we beat the drum in 2021 on, is happening now. Okay, Illuvium, I get asked a lot about this. Alluvium has gone green on our visual trends indicator. Alluvium got, this indicator got you out in early December, and now it's getting you back in. Interesting to look at the NFTs and the metaverse in front of this NFT LA conference, which I will be at all of next week. Don't worry. We'll have the market update for you, hopefully live from the convention. Okay. The point is, as in equities, you do not want to, you know, underestimate what can happen on the upside. Okay. When you have a conference, people speaking, catalysts with oversold, destroyed sectors like NFT and metaverse. Okay. Ethereum. Now, to just pound the table on this for the 20th time. Okay. The blue line indicates a bond market metric for inflation. Every time that Every time that indicator makes a new high, ETH makes a new high. So how many YouTube channels are talking about the possibility of ETH making a new high? Some people say, you know, the merge rally is starting. Some people have said that it's like two or three Bitcoin halvings all at once, right? So I've heard that. There are a lot of smart people out there, okay? But who's talking about a new high? Or who's talking about a move from 3,000 to 4,000 like that? Nobody. Nobody. Except us. Right? Except me and you. The people I'm grateful who tune in to this show. So you watch it live, I love you. You watch it recorded, I love you. If you're new, come experience the love. Come watch us. Okay? Because if this happens, folks... You can get a year's worth of gain in crypto in a very compressed time frame. My commercial for tokenmetrics.com for the last week is that if you have it or you had it as I talked about it, you can have it paid for in days. All right. The all exchange index. You're like, what? What's that? Well, token metrics uses artificial intelligence to rank cryptos. So it reads the price action of cryptos and then puts the best cryptos into portfolios for day trading, for weekly trading. For me, if I see something showing up in a daily index day after day after day, I get the hint that a trend is beginning. Okay. 
Elrond has been in there for a couple days. Solana is now 30%. This particular pie graph is the best of the best in quotes, not investment advice, right? It's what our indices are talking about from all exchanges. Now, I like to look at things like Qcoin, right? Elrond, Solana, Wrapped Bitcoin, Polkadot, okay? Bitcoin continues to show up even on an altcoin exchange, okay? Now, back to our crypto quant department from Token Metrics. This indicator, these dots on this chart, okay, are an aggregation of scores for 6,000 cryptos. So we look at these quantitative metrics and give you a dot. And we plot it on total crypto market cap. This is custom. This is what our VIP guys get. So this thing got you out at the top in November and it beat bullish two days ago before Solana moon, before near mooned, right? You know, before Nano went up the way it did today, right? Before Rune exploded 30% or 20%. Follow what I'm saying? Okay, let's look at GMT. Okay, this is one of the more highly speculative coins with a narrative where it's paying you to go for a walk. It's gone from $90 to 200 and something dollars. And the question is, is this overdone? A lot of people are searching Google for GMT. Now, from my technical work, if it's above 74 cents, it can go to $1.30. Sometimes these things can get emotional. This is probably a good metric of speculative juices in the market over the weekend, right? No one really wants to buy this, I think, okay, because it's fundamentally overvalued at this point, okay? So if that's true, whatever. But if it goes up anyway, it's a sign the market means business on speculation. And if these kind of coins can go up, that is eventually going to start leaking over into the big caps like Bitcoin and Solana. This might be a good time to remind you that for Women's History Month, we're doing a 25% discount on any token metrics plan or upgrade. That's WIC25 all. Okay, that's the coupon code. I'll give you a minute to take a picture of it with your phone. It's good for the next seven days. So when I'm not on the air, you can wake up and check out what indices and what, what cryptos are moving to the top of the rankings, moving into the indices, right? Because, you know, you're probably sitting out there going, okay, Bill, I got the point. I need to get long. What do I get long? Okay, well, here it is. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That is the market update. All right, let's see who's here and who's hanging out. Okay, we have Madrid. Okay, we have Madrid. We have Oklahoma, Los Angeles, West Coast in the house. Got this a little late in the day for you, uh, or at least late in the day for the rest of us, earlier in the day for you. Okay, I know somebody wants Gala, right? That's always a big popular name. Okay, we have D-I-V-I, -I, Gala. Chain link. Okay, we have Poland in the house. Welcome. We appreciate you out there along with Palm Springs. Okay, I see XMR and Solana. Okay, big treasury market, treasury bonds down, interest rates up. Honestly, I found that shocking. You know, freaking out people in legacy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Somebody wants to know where are the 20 K bears? Okay. Well, the 20 K bears probably gets, have been stopped out and will probably FOMO in at 50 or 52 where I anticipate we will be selling Solana entry point. I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about that. All right. Let's talk about that. Okay, coming up here, coming up. Okay, so here's the gigantic rise in interest rates, the 10 you note yield. I got to redraw this almost every day. It's it's shocking, right? 
So this was April of 2019. God, does anybody even remember that far back? The technical target on the 10 year note yield is 260. My theme for this week is that the bond market's getting a little bit emotional. I guess it's going to go right on being emotional. One thing I would take away from this is that notice how interest rates are rising massively and crypto can barely go down. A new monetary order could be at hand. Okay, let's talk about the big layer ones. Okay, so I, I set this up prior to try to get entry points. So I think people have now got the point. Okay, they've got the point. All right, now we're going to see about the dip strategy. So let's start with ETH. This is a smart stochastic. It can warn you about big moves or corrections. Okay, last time ETH gave you one of these shaded signals, right? ETH dipped. Now I'm showing a bunch of support, a 23% retracement, okay? And a DeMarc support point around 3030. In other words, there's going to be buyers of ETH in front of 3000. Okay. I would actually be shocked if it got down there, but if it does, that's where you move, not investment advice. Cardano. Where's Cardano Nation? Look at these guys. This is a big DeMarc support point right here at $1.07. Look at this thing wick down and come right back. The Cardano guys have got their DeMarc charts out for sure. Okay. Let me get over here and let me try to draw a fib retracement line. The point is, if you're in a Cardano, I had somebody asking me, should I do the trade now? You know what? I got to be honest with you. You you got to you got to do a trade, all right? If you're asking should I do the trade, don't, you know, you're asking the wrong question. Okay? If you want to do it, do it. Do it. Okay? Because in this market, he who hesitates is lost. Okay? Not investment advice, but this is the time where you got to say, "All right, I got to be quick. Like, that's why I started with room. This show is not just about what I tell you when the show is on. Okay. It's about what happens after the show, right? What do you take away? Cardano holds a big Fibonacci retracement lumber at $1.09. Okay. All right. Somebody says, wake up people. The Fed and central banks are the government. We have no representatives, long crypto. Love that. Love that. Okay. Avalanche. Okay. Avalanche probably driving people crazy. All right. Can't get the rally that they want. Okay. However, we saw this in Solana, right? Like Avalanche has become the new Solana, right? Because it just can't seem to go up, right? Driving people crazy, I'm sure. Okay, this is not as trading view friendly, okay? But let's talk about AVAX anyway, okay? The prior high in Avalanche was 79. So as Avalanche, if it glides towards 80, you got to think that that's where the buyers are going to come in, right? Because if you zoom in on the chart, right? Here was the low at 81. Here was the low at 82, Okay. And today here was the low at 8240. So this is a four hour chart. They've maybe got like eight more hours before they may make a low, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get a Friday profit taking puke. Maybe people will just give up in this thing, right? They're exasperated. Okay. Solana. Okay. Speaking of exasperated. Okay. Everyone FOMOs in. Okay. After, you know, not wanting to touch it, you get the 13 and the nine top and then it comes off, but there's a lot of support in Solana at 96, 78 and at 98. And as you can see, the world has got their DeMarc charts and their fib retracements out. Okay. When a trend is starting, if you start seeing 
basic fib retracements holding, that is a sign that things are turning around. Okay, polka dot. All right, notice the little warning signal that doesn't give you much of anything. Polka dot just sort of went up and sat still. Interesting, don't you think? Right, polka dot goes down, makes a low at 2020, and comes straight back. Okay. Polkadot used to be at 50. At 50, everyone loved it. At 20, no one wants to talk about it. Okay. Polkadot is basically where it was, I don't know, on the 23rd, like four days ago, right? Or three days ago. Okay. Near. Okay. 13 top on the four hour chart. Dip that lasts about, I don't know, a day, right? You might see this thing go sideways for about, I don't know, another couple of hours. 12 hours, a half day, maybe. Okay. Support is at 1182 and notice where this low is. They can't control themselves. They're like, Oh my God, I got to have this right now. <laughs> so yeah, you might get another dip, but remember the rune example. Okay. You have to be patient to a degree, right? But these dips may be shallower than you think. So don't FOMO when it's up but you may have to like put a partial position on, on a dip if you want to get involved and say, if it goes down, I'll buy more. Frequently, those positions are smaller than you might think, okay? Smaller than you think, okay? Parrish wants to know, are we dropping this weekend? Okay, maybe, right? We, we should be so lucky, honestly, as to get the dip. Right, because the bond market's closed, the bond market's gonna freak out. Okay, that could wreck stocks. Okay, the Russians could wreck stocks. Okay, but what if that doesn't happen? That's the question crypto people have been asking themselves for a week. And as legacy didn't fall apart, every day that legacy doesn't fall apart is a day that crypto can moon. All right, let's look at RNDR. Okay, as we welcome Boston, Toronto, Florida. Okay, we definitely appreciate everybody being in the house along with Oklahoma. Okay, Bangladesh. Okay, Canada. All right, Jasmine is back. Welcome. All right, RNDR. Okay, four hour chart, probably eight hours away from a bottom. Obviously, as you can see, Somebody wants to buy it because that candle is green after a dip. What has changed in the market? People are buying dips. Green shows up at the bottom. Now, here's a little trivia. RNDR on a weekly chart, right? What has RNDR done, okay, over the last, I don't know, eight, nine weeks? Well, it's gotten sold every time it goes up. Every time RNDR goes up, it gets sold, okay? But there's support down here at, you know, 40615. What's the point? The point is if the sellers are out of ammo and you have a metaverse play, metaverse convention, NFT convention, you know, I, I interviewed Wendy, went crypto Wendy O for our women in crypto series, right? I interviewed a bunch of people and all they want to do is tell me about how NFTs and the metaverse are like the next big thing. Yet who's talking about that? Nobody, nobody, right? I mean, they are, they are the NFT metaverse world is taking over the entire city of Los Angeles next week, right? And they're selling Growth oriented metaverse place in front of that? Are, are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, we know this stuff can go down, right? We know that. <laughs> but no one's asking, okay, when do I get long? Or where do I get long? Although, you know, somebody is asking for gala entry points. So I get it. Let's find some. Let's do it. Okay, so gala entry points. I have just around 24 cents, okay? Notice the 13 top, everybody FOMOs in, tough, right? Bull markets can be tough, right? Everyone FOMOs in and then they drop it. 
So some of these late buyers may give you the opportunity to get it at 24 cents. So, you know, okay, all right, I'm excited, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you have to get totally crazy, right? You have to get it on a dip. You have to wait to see if the buyers show up or you can catch it as it hits a support point. So it requires a little bit of patience, a lot of nerve, but if you know what you want to do, just remember, a lot of other people probably want to do it too. So let them hit it. Now, if I had to make a guess, here's my guess, right? The bond market will probably be hysterical. That will be the front page news headline in all the weekend papers for legacy. That might give you an oh no crypto moment. Or this is the oh no crypto moment. And now that the bond market is closed, crypto can turn around and go up. That actually sounds better to me. So you're like, Bill, what did you just say? Well, I, you heard me. I was talking it out. I was working it out like, you know, spitballing ideas. If the bond market is closed and the bond market didn't wreck crypto today, then whatever downside you got, okay, that's the downside dip that you got. And you can lean on support just below the market. So remember Rune, right? Don't FOMO in at the top, but the dips, yeah, take advantage of the dips, but they can be shallow, okay? Moon River. Okay, somebody's asking about, Dream Advisor is asking about Phantom, okay? Moon River. Now, this, this stuff is all going to start looking the same, okay? Uh, Moon River actually looks like it can make a new high for the move, Okay, so here is the DeMarc Elliott wave work for Moon River, right? From 45 to 58 to 50 to 72, back down to 59. And most likely you're looking at a new high for this move, right? That that is distinctly possible. Let me get my DeMarc indicators back up here. The most important thing to remember for Moon River is that support is at 5830. So sometimes the dips are shallow. Sometimes these things can like overshoot the levels. Okay. Bull markets are difficult. Okay. Somebody asking for DIVI. Okay. And then somebody was here for ERG from yesterday. Okay, so we'll make sure we do that. Let's try DIVI. Okay, so here comes an 89 minute chart of DIVI. All right. The first thing I'm thinking of is I, I've seen this before where you get these reversals, you know, at, at the bottom of a trend. Then when this Williams moving average might be tough to see down here, but when that starts creeping up, okay, this thing can go up. Okay. Now I, I'm not trying to be a moon boy because I don't, I'm not familiar with this, but if I was hodling this, or I was looking to hold it or possibly even get involved. Okay. Not investment advice, use a stop, but this looks like the creeping bit, right? The creeping bit. Okay. Somebody wants to wait for a dip to deploy more capital. A perfect, perfect sense. Perfect sense. I mean, what's the best investment strategy? The one that helps you sleep at night. The one that helps you sleep at night. If you got positions, okay, or lack of a position and you can't sleep, then you need to adjust it because your primary asset, other than your trading capital, is your inner peace, right? That's what this is all about for anybody who wonders, right? Balance, right? You cannot do crypto from an unbalanced perspective. Okay, ERG. Okay, we must have talked about this before. Let's go back to the 89 minute chart. 
Okay, these diagonal lines come from a fib speed resistance system. Okay, so this has gone up a lot. And then we're going to draw a fib retracement here. And then we're going to get some news. Okay, the news is, is that this thing on a retracement stopped right at the 50% level. So when you start drawing fib retracements, once you've gotten your token metric signals that this thing has turned around, okay. Okay, this is the 89 minute bar. So what you're seeing is when this thing went lower, right, it turned around and went up. Somebody was waiting for it down there at the 50% retracement level. And, you know, just from a straight TA point of view, right, the old ceiling became the floor. Okay, when you start seeing basic TA working, that means computers, believe it or not, and humans have got their charts out going, where do I get involved? Where do I get involved? Okay. Okay, 89 is a famous number from the Fibonacci series. All right. Uh, Gann was a big fan of it. William Gann is a technical analyst. So I actually learned this. I, I actually got the idea from this from the guy that gave me my first technical analysis textbook when I was an 18 year old intern at a major investment bank the summer that Iraq invaded Kuwait and oil went from $30 to $60 in one day. So this gentleman gave me the chart book and gave me my shot. So I use the 89 minute chart because it's good. It's accurate, but as a salute to him. Okay. Okay. Zcash and Monero, the privacy guys are out there. I know you're asking for this. Let's get busy on Zcash. Okay. As you can see, okay. This is just like, this is like every dip is being bought in Zcash, <laughs> right? And the thing that's funny about Zcash, and I, I think this is going to be true across the board, right? All of these things that had highs from back in November are going to just possibly go right back there, right? In other words, if ETH can make a new high, you know, maybe Zcash is the new Bitcoin, okay? <laughs> right? I mean... Are you going to get in front of this if they've got layer one functionality as well as, you know, a, a complete change in the monetary order? I'm not, right? Like some of these coins haven't even moved yet. Like Zcash and Nano are moving, but what happens if Bitcoin and Monero and all these other coins start getting involved? Okay, let's go to Monero over here. Okay, let's go to Zcash over here. Okay. All right. So Zcash overbought. Okay. We kind of knew that 13 top goes down for like three hours and then or I'm sorry, 12 hours and then resumes. So Zcash may be getting a little emotional and may head for 209. If Zcash is above 209, then it's gone. But this trade may rotate from Zcash, either into Monero or into Bitcoin, okay? In other words, some of these smaller coins can be leading indicators of bigger coins. That's the way it works in equities. All right, so here's Monero on a four-hour chart, right? You have a 13 top, doesn't top. You have a nine top, and you get the prescribed, you know, mini correction, and look, it's green again. All right. Now I'm sure if you go to Monero weekly, right. Driving this point home. Okay. You know, Monero traded as high as $500 last May. Okay. Monero is currently at 201 and probably has six more positive weeks. So I don't know what a price target might be in Monero, but I know that you would want to be long the future of money. Okay. Somebody is asking for AMP. Okay, do we have a bullish divergence on the daily chart in AMP? 
Okay, so in AMP, I'm seeing resistance at three cents. Probably going to have to go to trading view on this one. Okay, so yes, this person is correct. So on all week long, we've been covering this, right? Right. Maintaining our reputation as an underrated YouTube channel. Okay. All week long, we've been looking at these cryptos where prices, okay, have been making new lows. And the momentum indicators like stochastics and RSI, right, have been telling you that, you know, bears keep pushing it down, but they're getting tired. Chart speak is bullish divergence, right? Meaning prices make new lows, but the RSI makes higher lows. Now, they haven't yet gone after AMP, but that doesn't mean they can't, right? We saw this in Galaxy Digital. It went up 30%. So if you believe in this coin and you've got these divergences and you've got these downward sloping wedge, which is, you know, the bears trying to hold it down, they're not going to be able to hold it down forever. They're not, right? And if the whole crypto market goes kind of all at once, like I said, think about how the world has been working. You know, the market goes up. Everyone's afraid to buy it. Legacy spooks, people take profits. Okay, so everyone's like, okay, I'm done. I don't want any risk over the weekend. Okay, but what happens? It dips less than you think, and then you wake up Monday morning, and if there's no problem, it's gone, right? Probably led by Bitcoin. Okay, Patricia is asking, is near a, a, a long-term hold? Okay, well, our fundamental guys have been on near since it was at seven. Okay. It was at nine. We started talking about it. I discussed how they, they would puke it out to seven, wash everyone out. I mean, they've done this twice. They've done this twice in near where they've puked everybody out here and then ramped it. Right. And then they puked it out again. Awful, right? But look at the daily chart. Look at what's going on with the moving averages, right? These Williams alligator moving averages, those three lines represent moving averages across multiple time frames, conveniently aggregated in one place. By the way, this is a chart system favored by the guys from Token Metrics that build all those nice indicators we discussed at the start of the show. Okay. So at Token Metrics, you know, we think Mo momentum for, you know, our web-based tools. And then YouTube handles like, you know, range trading and some small coin picking. So it's not just a channel, it's a company, right? And we handle it all for you. So is near a long-term hold? Well, our fundamental guys like it. And that alligator moving average is pointing north. So I think when you look at layer ones, right, the only layer one that hasn't had an absolutely spectacular, ridiculous moonshot is near, right? Okay, you know, all right, may, maybe going from, you know, a dollar to $20 and back. But the thing is, when you look at near on a weekly chart, that if you get a weekly close above 1208, Let me make sure I got this level right. Right. It's actually 12. Uh, uh, okay. Let's call it 1215. All right. Now, again, it has to happen to be triggered. But if you get a close, a, a weekly close, this is near weekly. So I'll label it. Okay. Okay. You get a close above 1215 in near. You could be talking about either 17 or 26. Now, how likely is that? I don't know. But let me tell you this. Don't underestimate what crypto can do, okay, if they're going to do a year or a month's worth of gains in 10 days. Don't forget about this. NFTLA starts next week. Nobody's paying attention to that, okay? If there's a bullish Bitcoin move, while metaverse and layer ones and NFTs are sort of moving to the, you know, 
there's like constant positive news flow. Okay. You want to hold on to this long term? Sure. Okay. If it goes from 12 to 26, you know, make the appropriate portfolio adjustment. Okay. What's a long term hold in a weird world? I actually don't know. But what's a good project that could go up a lot, either in the short term or the long term? I would say NEAR would be one of those projects. Now let's go FTM, FTM Phantom. Okay, so we did get the bottom in this one. And the question is, is it going to keep going? Right now, a lot of people who got trapped appear to be selling today's rally. Is that a smart thing to do? Okay, so on the intraday chart, this is the four hour picture. Okay, Phantom ramps into resistance. Right. So it didn't pay to sell it at a dollar five and it doesn't pay to buy it at a dollar 40. But if Phantom comes back down and holds a dollar 34, okay, that's a sign that something has changed in Phantom. Now, I understand people may be holding this. People may have had to live with all that bad news about guys leaving. But at the end of the day, there's a big nine bottom in Phantom, right? So this week, it, you know, you look at the four hour chart, like, wow, this thing is up huge. You look at the weekly chart, this thing was at 338 at the top. It's now at $1.36. Okay. Kusama, interoperability. No one's talking about interoperability. What a perfect time to talk about it. All right. Kusama, like all these things, like you can't even get down to support. They just, ex the sellers, they just, I mean, they just exhausted themselves. Everybody puked this stuff out. Like everybody just gave up. Okay. Here's like a movement warning signal in Kusama. Kusama goes sideways and then boom, right? This may be exactly the same thing. Kusama dipped and they were just buying it. Like they can't stop buying it. Any crypto for the weekend right? How do you feel about shipping token? Okay. Okay. Steve is saying, you know, Steve is making the fundamental case for Ave. Okay. I did not do a back already. Okay. The big technical support point to watch in Ave is a dollar 60. I'm sorry, is 162. Again, the nine top, all right. If it comes back down and no one wants to sell it at these levels, the next support is a dollar fifty-one. So one sixty-three, one fifty-one in Ave. Looking at the weekly chart. Okay, what are you going to see? Nothing, right? I mean, this thing was like this. This coin was at. The high was 300 back in December. Okay. Anything to see in helium? Helium makes the nine bottom. And one of the things I've been noticing about helium is, you know, big players may be selling any rally, right? So it looks like it goes up and then people lose patience and they launch. But again, how many times have we seen this already on this stream, right? Uh, 22, 2185 was his support point and they can't control themselves. They got to buy it ahead of that. So you can wait for 2185 or you can say, well, that was the down move. Now I got to figure out how I, you know, what dip I can get into. All right. Okay, did I already do AVAX? Yes, but I'd be happy to do AVAX again. Matter of fact, let's get wild and do a 90 minute chart of AVAX to see if we can't zero in on some levels that people may not be looking at. So AVAX looks like it's washing people out below 8441. So if that was the level where they were washing people out, maybe they can bring it back above that. All right, that would be constructive. So just for laughs, let's do the AVAX 30-minute chart, okay? 
sometimes you actually, once you get the reversal, once you suspect that the trend is at hand, that's when you can actually go to lower time frame charts and look for a bottom. So looky, looky what we have here on a 30 minute chart of Avalanche, we've got a nine bottom, okay? They try to start the downtrend again. They puke it out. Everyone gives up and now they're leaning on support at 83. So you may have seen the low in all these layer ones, honestly, right? I mean, we talked that this is Solana, right? On the four hour chart from before, okay? Okay, somebody's got VRA. So let's get over here and look at VRA. Okay. So again, all of these things are going to look the same. We're just varying it up on the 30 minute chart, right? They crack this thing, it goes down, right? And then now everyone's coming in to try to buy the dip. Okay. When you look at this on like, say a weekly chart, right? Or a daily chart, it's basically destroyed, right? There is resistance at this moving average, but it has been down here for how long? How long has it been down at these levels, right? Since February of last year. So if you believe in this, you could be looking at, I don't know, four or five more updates or at least a chance at it. And if the market's giving you a dip, then take a shot at that. Okay, let's try APRA. Okay, this I do not have on that system. Okay, APRA, let's see what I got, if I got it. All right, I don't have it. Okay, LRC Weekly, very nice. Let's take a look at LRC Weekly. Okay. Loop ring weekly. Okay, that's right. Okay, we have 91 cents as support. Okay, a nice bounce off of that after a nine bottom and the previous ceiling right at roughly 89 cents acted as support. So the old ceiling is now the floor. Okay, if you look at, say, the 30-minute chart, just for laughs, okay, again, you know, you can see that every time they hit this thing, they get the nine bottom, you get the volatility warning, and they're just all coming back in, okay? A-R-P-A. Okay. Okay. All right, so with these type of charts, I like to draw the Fib speed resistance fan, okay? To try to find out if it's actually breaking out or not, okay? To me, what this looks like is, it looks like a breakout on volume, right? And the level is like 0.07 or 0.08, right? So they're, they're making a return move on this, all right. And, and you know what, folks, this may not be like, you know, the number one crypto on your mind, but this type of TA, right, where we start looking for trends and for things that were moving sideways, breaking out, this is where it's at, right? Because you're going to get breakouts, return moves because people don't believe it. And then once people believe it, there's nothing to do except sit back and watch it go. How long that lasts? I don't know yet, but right? People don't believe it. They don't believe it. They, they don't. I can tell. I can tell by the way this thing trades that everybody is used to the range. And of course, I can say all that shit, but you know, it is scary. I'm like, wow, okay, we're going to buy ETH at 3,000, right? You got to believe if you're buying ETH at 3,000, okay? So Crow on a four-hour chart, right? 
So, you know, you get the ramp up to 50 cents, but what happened? Okay, it went above the DeMarc resistance point at 45 cents. Okay, they had their sort of moonshot. And then as soon as it got done going down, somebody started buying the dip again, right? <clears throat> the dip buyers are out there. Now, you know, here you got a nine top on the daily, right? And what did you get? You got a dip for like, I don't know, a day. Not even a day, like a half day. It opened up, it went down, and they came screaming back. So this thing looks like it wants to go to 50 cents. I got my crypto.com debit card the other day. So anybody in this world with the geopolitical situation that doesn't have crypto backed, the ability to go from crypto to cash instantly rather than going through a bank is crazy. Okay. Crazy. Okay. Taz looking at sand. Okay. Let's get to the metaverse. Thank you for reminding me about that because I had this whole metaverse list set up for y'all. Okay, so somebody was asking about GHST entry points. Okay, I may actually get bold and take this down to a 30 minute chart just to see what happens. Okay, so not tremendous liquidity. All right, but I think if GHST finds itself back above $2, that's probably a bullish sign, particularly since this is showing up in the token metrics, artificial intelligence indices. Okay. All right. Um, Ave coming with a debit card. It makes sense, right? I mean, you just can't not have one. Okay. Sandbox moons to a DeMarc resistance point at 352. Everybody genuflex and sells. All right. Everyone takes profits. It looks like it's over, right? Wait a minute. Okay, sandbox on a weekly chart. Is this expensive? I don't know. Okay, what do I say about the 62% retracement? So this whole moonshot from zero to eight dollars, sandbox is now coming back above 334, which is a 62% level on a weekly chart. So who wants to buy the high in sandbox? Nobody, but is it the high or is it a breakout? My old boss at Goldman used to say, buy breakouts. People in equities, because it's slower moving, man, they love it. When they get a trend line breakout, they just want to go because they know, they, what do they know? The hedge funds, the mutual funds, the big players in crypto, it's the whales. Also in crypto, noticing trending on Google, Goldman Sachs buys crypto. Blackstone or BlackRock or some large mutual fund group, forgive me if I got the name wrong, is talking about offering crypto services to investors. Hmm, interesting, right? How come everybody's afraid to buy crypto at the dawn of crypto coming of age? What's the matter with everybody out there? Okay. Decentraland, four hours. Hits resistance, comes back off. Okay, let's take a look at the weekly chart to see if I got some on-the-fly Fibonacci retracement math that I could play around with in Decentraland. Okay, Decentraland goes from, I don't know, zero. Oh, wait, look. Decentraland, after stopping everybody out for eight weeks, is coming back above the 62% retracement level at 51 cents. I'm sorry, at $2.51. So on one hand, everyone goes, oh, oh, I can't buy this. Okay. It's gone from $2.20 to $2.70. It's like they're looking at the world through a keyhole. Wrong. Wrong. Open the door. Open the window. See the big wide world. Okay. You're going to be short metaverse breaking out in front of NFTLA or short as in under invested or afraid to buy it or looking to sell it because it's tortured you for nine weeks. And I get that, believe it or not. I get that. Like, oh my God, I can't deal with this thing going back down one more time. Yeah. That's usually when shit moves hard. Okay. All right. So here comes the metaverse people, Red Fox. I remember all this stuff at the top of the market.
Okay, again, it, it's almost hard to draw stuff. Some of this, some of this metaverse stuff is so destroyed. I can't even fit it all on my screen. Better screen resolution coming soon, by the way, right? Along with an improved microphone. Hopefully you all like the improved microphone, right? It's now on my shirt. Okay, now check out the speed resistance. Okay, I drew it. I know you can't see it. So let me zoom in. Uh-oh, what's happening? It's like gliding through a level most people can't see, except for you because you're tuned into the show. And oh, look, the moving averages are going the other way. Okay, now let's type this in in token metrics. Okay, now this may not get a good grade yet, but you want to keep an eye on all of these things, right? To see if their grades improve, right? You want to watch the visual trends indicator, okay? Because Red Fox, it got you out in December. And what did I say about Solana yesterday? You want to start combing through sectors to find things that you like that have not mooned yet. Because you have to ask yourself, if the trend is starting, right, what's going to cause it to go green? Well, probably a 15% rally. Okay, so if a 15% rally has not happened yet and you like the coin, well, let's go think about that. Now, if you go back over here to ratings, right? Now, you can see the coins that we like the best. If you were here earlier, shocking that Solana is at the top. Okay, but if you look at this tab, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going off on, you know, metaverse ahead of metaverse and NFTs ahead of NFT Los Angeles, you can get, you want to say, all right, I, I need to figure out what to do in the metaverse. I don't know what to do. You can go click on the metaverse tab and then the AI will give you the highest rating metaverse coins. So there's GHST, you know, Illuvium, Render is in there. All of these things trending higher with the scores above 80. Okay. Boson protocol, all these things that I remember from back at the top of the metaverse FOMO, okay? At the metaverse FOMO, right? Back in December, everyone wanted it. Now, no one even wants to talk about it. No one even wants to talk about it because people got smoked. I got smoked, right? But who cares? That was yesterday's trade. You know, maybe the title of this stream is So What, Now What? Right? So what, now what? Okay, so step on gate IO, all right? You know, you, you have some constructive stochastics pictures. And the question is, is this rally over? Is this the rally or is support going to hold? And these alligator moving averages, are they going to continue to point north, right? It looks like everybody is trying to sell at 18 cents, right? It had a shot at breaking out above 18 cents and people keep selling it. Right in this environment where everything is looking really good, right? You want to see buyers stepping in as sellers are giving up. Right here, the sellers are not done giving up yet. Okay. If you dwell in the past, it will destroy you in crypto. So true. So true, yet so hard to remember, right? That even if you lost money or you did a bad trade, Okay, even if you bought the high or sold the low, you have something in common with the greatest traders in the world because they've all done both, probably in the same market on the same move. Okay, wild. All right, trying to get out of its own way, trying to get out of its own way. Okay, so, you know, this is acting like it's dead money. That doesn't mean it can't go up, right? But what may happen is Sandbox and Decentraland may have to lead and these other coins may follow. Because as you know from way back when, that when stuff in these coins gets, when it gets wild and it gets speculative, I just don't think you're going to have months of speculative. 
You may have days or weeks. So I suggest you take advantage of that. Okay. When Sheeb Moon. Good question. Okay. Sheeb at the moment is still at resistance at 2526. All right. It's having a dip today after making a nine top. Believe it or not, I'm actually interested in these coins. I'm normally not interested in these coins. I'm interested in these coins. You know why? Because they're money. They're used as money. You know, people are like, oh, they're mean coins. Okay. But if people think they're money in this world, things have changed. Do you realize Vladimir Putin was on the tape today complaining that he's been canceled? They did not have cancel culture in the KGB handbook. It's not a tactic. It's not a fighting tactic he was aware of. Okay. So we're all getting an education out there. Good guys, bad guys. This is not a time to be closed minded. Okay. Now, if you're, if you're in Sheen because you think it's going to go up 8,000% like it did last time, you might want to adjust your expectations. But that doesn't mean once Nano and Bitcoin get going, that Sheeb and all these other things can move with it. They can move with it, right? Okay, let's look at Rare. Okay, sitting nicely on support on the 30-minute chart at 61 cents with a nine bottom. So kind of nifty, right? Sellers trying to hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. Uh, are they going to make it? Are they going to make it? Right? Now, of course, you know, wild price action in this stuff, a ramp from 43 to 85, but it looks like the dip buyers are coming back in on the short-term charts. And this allows you to take advantage of the down move, okay? Use a stop, and see if you can do what? Buy a dip and make money. Now, as somebody noted, please like the video. And notice yesterday, I think, I want to say we got to like 560 likes on a video. That is rocking, right? I'd love to see a thousand one day. That probably takes 52K Bitcoin, all right? But I got to wrap it up for today, folks, right? I gave you the late day look for the weekend. Okay, so let's sum up. Bitcoin, Bitcoin's probably going up. ETH's probably going up a lot, which could take Solana and Near with it. People are buying the dip in Cardano, and I don't think anybody understands the fact that NFTLA could ignite a, you know, a sharp but temporary spike in the whole metaverse complex, particularly since the charts are turning. So if the bond market didn't wreck crypto, the geopolitical situation doesn't wreck crypto, what's going to happen when Mark Cuban takes the stage at NFTLA? Right? In equities, we call that a bullish catalyst. By the way, I'll be there at some free meetup if you want to talk charts, right, or get ready for the week, and you want to put the live in we are live, as in me and you. Right. So I will be at I will be at an influencer event and it's on my Twitter, crypto underscore noble. So normally I don't do the Twitter shill, but the information on the free event is there if you're in LA. All right, folks, I gotta get out of here. I appreciate you. Please like the video. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna if you wanna be on this up move, it's this channel and tokenmetrics.com. This is Bill Noble. I'll see you on Monday.